So in my last video, I ended up talking briefly about progressive overload anxiety because there is a, a situation in that workout, in that Road to 18 Inch Arms episode that I posted on Saturday, where the old me would have completely stressed out over a situation that happened where I happened to lose a couple reps on my preacher curls compared to what I'm usually doing for my performance. And instead of letting that derail me entirely, I've realized that I have a much better approach and more solid and sound mindset when it comes to training and viewing and utilizing progressive overload within my training. So let me tell you a bit of a story about how I used to train. So back during my power building phase that I think you're all probably a little bit too familiar with at this point, I used to put all of my stock into progressive overload. It was add weight, add reps at any cost by any means necessary. Nothing else matters. I had no attention to stimulus. It was just weight on the bar. And there are grains of truth to this method. There are definitely positive takeaways from having an approach like this, but there are elephants in the room that nobody talks about, and it isn't a fully, fully sound philosophy. There are definitely some missing pieces to where maybe a, a little aspect here and there of that approach can work for some people. But I think in the, in the bigger picture, we're missing what actually causes growth because it's not progressive overload because if you're able to just do a little bit more and have your body catch up to that week over week, how are you going to be adding more in the meantime? You have to make adaptations and you make adaptations by getting stimulus. So if you go to the gym and do 10 reps of a hundred pounds on bench press, and that's the most you can do, you can't just do 11 next week because how would you get 11 if you can only do 10? Well, the reason why you might be able to do 11 next week is because you made adaptations from the stimulus of doing 100 pounds for a set of 10. So when you view progressive overload as a bit more of an outcome of your training rather than a cause of muscle growth, that's when it all starts to click a little bit more. Because you see, when you take that other mindset of progressive overload causes growth, that's why people write off lifts that are, that are a little bit lighter. So that's why people don't take their arm training that seriously. That's why people don't take iso isolation lifts that seriously. It's because you can't see progressive overload as quickly. But does this mean that these lifts don't build muscle just as well as a lift that you can go a bit heavier on? No, it's just based on what the lift actually is. If it's a lift that you're maybe not training through a very difficult range of motion, maybe it's a compound lift where you can use multiple joints and multiple muscle groups that all contribute to adding more weight to the bar on that lift, then of course it just makes logical sense that you can lift more if you're using more joints, using more muscles, and maybe you're not training through a very difficult range of motion. Maybe you're doing a squat to parallel instead of below parallel. Maybe you're doing a deadlift or a sumo deadlift where instead of doing a stiff leg or deficit deadlift, you're actually starting kind of above what peak resistance would be if you're doing something from say a deficit, for example. So to kind of tie this back into what I was talking about at first, instead of freaking out and stressing out and questioning everything because I lost a couple reps on my preacher curls last week, I just recognized that this was a one-off and I recognized that my training's been good as a whole and there's no reason for me to worry if I just had one quote unquote bad session. And that's another thing that you have to recognize is that the only time you'll have a bad session is when your stimulus is low and your stimulus isn't low from getting less reps. It's based on your proximity to failure and your overall effort and your technique, all these things kind of combine together to make sure that you're getting a good stimulus. So the way that I like to see it is don't really try and focus on your performance for today as being the mark of whether you had a good session or not. Focus on getting the most stimulus you can regardless of where your performance is and using your performance generally over time as just another measuring tool to measure your muscle growth. And of course, this comes into play with other factors like, uh, measuring your muscles and taking your body weight, taking progress pictures. All these different ways are super useful for measuring your muscle growth over time. So don't just focus so much on progressive overload to where other things don't actually matter. So when it comes to progressive overload anxiety, you have to be aware of two main downsides of having this anxiety. So the first one is going to be, you're gonna stress yourself out and you're gonna sacrifice your actual stimulus just to move more weight. This is pretty simple. This is basically just turning your lifts from good potent lifts that are building you muscle into ego lifts. So what does this look like? This maybe looks like 
instead of doing a normal bench with a slow, controlled eccentric, gently touching your chest and pressing forcefully up, this looks like a slightly faster eccentric. And then maybe once you hit a, a plateau again, you go with a slightly wider grip and you can add maybe five, 10 more pounds to the bar. Then maybe from there you get a little bit more of a bounce and then you use a bigger arch and then you use more leg drive and then you lift your butt off the bench. And you can see how slowly over time you can artificially add weight and add reps just because you're making the lift easier. And this is just a short term little pacifier because what you're doing is you're letting yourself feel good about the progress you're seeing on paper, but in the gym you're actually getting less stimulus and you're, bl you're blurring the lines of what's actual progress and what's just a plateau because who knows, you could be in a plateau and you're just making the lift a little bit easier each time through various methods of cheating, and you're not actually getting the stimulus that you need to out of that lift. And this is the ultimate problem with progressive overload anxiety, because now you're you're chasing the outcome at the expense of the stimulus. And the stimulus is what actually grows you. So when you focus on getting the most stimulus you can, you grow. But people have made this whole big deal about progressive overload being the driver of hypertrophy to where people sacrifice their stimulus just to get more progressive overload on paper, which ultimately is going to lead you into a plateau faster, even if on paper your training looks better, at least for the first handful of weeks or months. So ultimately, that's going to be the big Biggest issue with this. Another big issue is you're more prone to developing an unbalanced and just overall imbalanced physique. And this is what you see in powerlifters a lot of the time, where their program revolves around the three lifts that you can load the heaviest. If you are, and th this is where I kind of draw that connection from powerlifting to uh, bodybuilders having kind of unbalanced physiques. If you look at the way powerlifters trained, uh, they train for three big lifts that you can load very heavy. And that's cool because that's what they're competing in. So I respect it. That's the way they should train. But when you're bodybuilding and you're focused on progressive overload, what are you going to do? You're also going to bias those lifts that you can load the most possible weight on because you can see progressive overload the most often in those. And if you think every time you make a little progression that you can see tangibly on paper, then that's going to cause you more growth. So why would you do something like a preacher curl where you can only add five pounds once every couple months or add a rep once every couple weeks? What good would that do for you, right? There's no use in it because you can't see progressive overload as often as you could on a, a sumo deadlift with a whippy Ohio bar. So why wouldn't you just do the bigger, heavier lifts with a smaller range of motion because you can lift more weight on a smaller range of motion and get more progressive overload that way? Uh, that's the issue. That's why nobody takes their arm training seriously. That's why everybody has super low standards for their arms. That's why people have big legs and big glutes and are stronger than they look and their upper bodies are lagging and they have no biceps, they have no forearms, they have no neck, they have none of these muscles that tr are best trained through movements you can't see progressive overload as often on. But I think if if you were to say progressive overload is the main driver of hypertrophy rather than the outcome of hypertrophy, I think it, it gets a little bit tricky to explain why even lighter lifts like a preacher curl or even a Smith JM press or tricep isolation or side raises, it's hard to explain why those movements would work because there's barely any progressive overload you're seeing on there. And it's not like the muscles that are trained in the movements where you see the most progressive overload have way more growth potential in a relative sense. Ultimately, the mindset that I take for myself and that I'd want to make more well known on my channel is try and focus on getting the most stimulus you can each session. It shouldn't have to be a requirement for you to add a rep or add weight every single session for it to be productive. You can still get good stimulus even if your performance is slightly down. Like if you maybe didn't sleep quite as good or maybe you didn't quite get the best nutrition in, it's still okay to have a, a performance at 97% instead of 100%. Maybe that means you lost a rep on a couple lifts throughout the session here and there and you didn't hit any PRs. It's still a productive session as long as you trained hard and push your lifts close to failure, if not to failure, depending on what lift it is. So the way I like to see it is instead of needing to have progressive overload to happen every session, it just incentivizes you to cheat your technique just for the sake of adding reps. And you, you put yourself into a corner where you stop doing the lifts that you don't see progressive overload on, or you just kind of half-ass them, which is also very normal. Um, 
and you lose your technique, which means you lose your stimulus. And a lot of the time cheating your technique means cheating the hard parts of the movement, which will actually give you the most growth. So all this to say, don't focus so much on progressive overload. Use it as just another measuring tool like you would regular muscle measurements, progress pictures, and body weight. Focus on getting stimulus so you can add reps or add weight next session. Always think about the next session. You want to get the most potent stimulus you can so next session you can do more. And when you focus on this, you'll notice that every workout you're doing has an emphasis on what you're doing next time. And what that's going to do is make sure every time you get a good stimulus, and that will actually, ironically, Ironically, cause you to see the most progressive overload because you're building the most muscle and using the best technique instead of just thinking super short term, needing to scratch that itch of adding rep at the expense of next session or even a few more weeks down the road. So with that being said, that's all I got for today. I hope this was useful. Let me know if you have any questions or any thoughts on the matter. I'll see you guys in the next one.